dogs. They are the friggin' best, dude. They're always there for us, they love us unconditionally, and their babies are cuter than our babies, which, from a survival instinct standpoint, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But I don't know, dude. I'd much rather hang out with this than that. Evolution be damned. But that's just the thing. We have bred these things to defy the natural order of the world. They used to be a utility, like hunting, farming, protection. And yes, we've made a couple breeds hyper good at those specific jobs. But it's a known fact that when you start playing God, it's pretty hard to shut that valve off. I mean, look at this thing. Look at these weird shitty abominations. This thing specifically has made God cry. In this video, I'm going to explain how we as humans, as a society, have ruined dogs. And how those dogs have ruined us. And yes, disclaimer. I am an outspoken cat owner, but there's no real bias here. When I was younger, I had a lot of dogs. Cats are a pretty recent development in my life. So when I'm talking shit about dogs, I'm not just doing it to talk shit. I want the best for these little guys. And I don't know what this is, but it's not the best. So I just wanted to start this video off strong by taking some of the world's most favorite breeds and talking about how we ruined them pretty horribly. I mean, the term purebred is super misleading. Although it sounds like the dog has perfect genetics and a flawless pedigree, it's pretty much the exact opposite. For instance, number one, the Golden Retriever. An absolute classic of a family favorite. I challenge you to go to an affluent suburb and not find one of these things wearing a seasonal bandana. They really are some of the best dogs in terms of looks and personality. It's a basic pick, but it's one of the best. You know, except for its horrendous health issues. Horrendous. Over the years, we've been breeding these things to look like the perfect toilet paper commercial dog. But we did that through inbreeding, which is historically a, a notable blunder. So forcing these adorable creatures into banging their mom and sister has led to some horrible symptoms, including, but not limited to, hyperthyroidism, sudden hair loss, bouts of aggression, their hips pop out, their knees pop out, and last but not least, uh, cancer. A lot, like a lot of cancer. 60% of these dogs die from cancer. I mean, good God, stop making these things. And then we have pugs. I don't even know what we were going for here. I don't, this is like a prank that went way too far. I mean, before we haphazardly bred these things to look like steaming piles of malformities, they were kind of normal looking. Taller, with longer legs, longer noses, and like slim builds. But now it just looks like we forced them into pressurized cans of tennis balls in their formative years. And due to the weird human need to make these things look like squishmallows, their health is in the toilet. First of all, they can't breathe. And if you look at this dog for more than two seconds, you'll understand why. It looks like they strictly chase parked cars. And they're also prone to all sorts of types of infections, and they also have a much higher risk of cancer and heart disease. A dog shouldn't have heart disease. That's an old man thing who's been eating hot dogs his whole life. This should not have heart disease. Oh, also, their eyes fall out. Just pop out of their heads every once in a while. Pugs are like Ikea furniture that you had a bunch of leftover pieces after you built it, and you just kind of ignored it, and then four years later, you put a coffee mug on a table, and it implodes. That's what a pug is. And then we have cockapoos, a mix of cocker spaniels and poodles. Now, growing up, my family was a cockapoo family. I had several of these growing up. Don't know why. My mom just really fucked with them. I didn't have any say in the matter, but they were good dogs. They're super trendy too. I can't go five blocks in my New York City neighborhood without seeing six of these things or a golden doodle. But I don't like golden doodles. Their heads are too big. They're like horses. Anyway, but I mean, aren't cockapoos the cutest little things, honestly? They're super smart. They're hypoallergenic and they also are genetically predisposed to have this thing called rage syndrome. They have a thing called Rage Syndrome. They are genetically predispositioned to have hate in their hearts. Rage Syndrome means they will explode in sudden acts of aggression out of literally nowhere. It's usually when they're like slightly falling asleep or dozing off and you rock up trying to get a cute little cuddle and all of a sudden you're missing your eye and half your upper lip. My dog Chip definitely has that and my mom just refuses to acknowledge it and she blames me like I did something wrong when my dog snaps at me. Very victim blaming Jill. And on top of that, they're also prone to joint trouble, ear infections, hereditary eye problems, skin conditions, and metabolism Rated, fuck, I got so close to getting that out. And metabolism related disorders, which is, you know, run of the mill for common purebred breeds. But the rage syndrome is crazy. Am I not insane for thinking that? And finally, we have Collies, one of the most American dog breeds. It's Lassie. Everyone loves Lassie. Actually, this dog is not American. It comes from, I think, Northern Ireland. I just really thought this dog was American. I always thought these dogs rode the line of the uncanny valley. Like, they're big and fluffy and adorable, but then their face is shaped like a birthday cone. And that cannot be a, a good thing for nature. And my hunch was correct, because they didn't used to look like that, and now they're genetically predisposed to have epilepsy, hip dysplasia, heart disease, and bone disorders? Their bones get fucked up? Jesus Christ. So in spirit, we killed Lassie. We as a nation have killed Lassie. Just get a mutt. What are we doing? Stop breeding these things. Get a mutt. 
So now that we know that getting a purebred dog can be a kind of a dick move, let's talk about how much of a bad investment it is. It's time to play America's favorite game show, Guess That Obscene Price. I cannot believe how many concepts this segment fits into. Today I have calculated the price of the dog as well as the costs that come with owning such a malformed creature over the course of its depressingly short lifespan. Number one, we have the French Bulldog, popular amongst retired old ladies and clout chasing influencers who thought these dogs just knew how to skateboard. These guys are admittedly kind of cute, but they are genetically predispositioned for uh, diseases such as heat stroke, hip dysplasia, and ulcers. Okay, how much do we think these little medical marvels cost? For a purebred, you're paying $4,000 up front just to own one of these things. But wait, there's more. With high insurance costs, because these things are practically lemons, and constant vet bills because of all their issues, you're gonna be paying on average $2,000 a year, which over a 10 year lifespan, you're looking at $24,000 just to own this dog. And the only number I'm upset about is that 10 year lifespan. Oh my God. Number two, how about the Afghan Hound? The only dog that's genetically designed to look like it needs to ask for the manager. Despite its upsetting appearance, these dogs are expensive. It costs you $2,000 just to get a puppy. But if we've learned anything, it's that the more expensive a puppy is, the closer it is to death. This video is making me so sad. They're predisposed to cataracts and hyperthyroidism, and hyperthyroidism is such a bummer. And with all that entailed, they're gonna be spending up to $3,000 a year. It's more fucked up than the bulldog. And with an average 12 year lifespan, you're gonna be spending $39,000 just to own this dog. Why would you do that? And that's before any of the grooming fees you have to spend to keep this thing looking like a nightmare version of Julia Roberts. How about a Samoyed? Known for being the cutest goddamn things on earth. I love this dog so much. A high quality Samoyed puppy can cost up to $6,000 which if you don't know, is a lot of goddamn money. But despite the fact that they're always smiling and look like they're little cloud angels, their bodies are rapidly falling apart. They're prone to corneal dystrophy, autoimmune conditions, and cardiac disorders that can amount to $5,000 yearly. Oh my God. So with the average lifespan of 12 years, you're gonna be paying $66,000. You're paying the amount of money you would get for a brand new BMW i4 and instead you're spending that money to keep this thing alive when it clearly just wants to die. But you could probably make that money back just by making an Instagram for one of these things because everyone likes looking at them. I love looking at them. They make me so happy and they're so cute and loving, but Jesus Christ, they're built to not last. And finally, we have the Tibetan Mastiff, the cutest thing on earth that will tear out your throat with zero hesitation. These guys are actually an ancient dog breed that were bred to protect monks in their temples, which is cool as shit. So I want you guys to do the math on this one. Using everything we've learned so far, every dog has gotten a little bit more expensive. There is a theme, there is a pattern. How much do you think this dog costs? 1.9 million dollars. Well, kind of, actually. There was one dog that sold for $1.9 million because they said it had tiger blood in it. That was kind of a joke. That was a fun one. I just wanted to lighten the mood while I talk about the saddest fucking thing I've ever talked about in a video ever. So now that I have talked about how much we have fucked up dogs as a species, I want to talk about how much dogs have fucked us up. I don't know what's happened in the last 30 years, but we have become way too into pampering our dogs. Why am I still holding the mic like this? We've gotten way too into pampering our dog. I'm all for buying the fancy dog food so it lives longer and putting it in a cute doggy hotel instead of a kennel when you go on a work trip. But besides that, that's the limit. Things get too weird after that. So I have found the most ridiculous dog themed establishments that I want to make fun of because they are ridiculous. Number one, dog restaurants. Could you be more white, please? I'm not talking about dog friendly restaurants. I'm talking about restaurants for dogs. Can I think of a bigger waste of time? You don't have to lie and say you're Pomeranian's an emotional support animal like you do at Applebee's. No, this place is expecting six feet through the door. Literally have a whole dog menu, a whole menu for dogs and little dog tables for the dogs. Each meal is about $20 for a dog and they have dishes such as peanut butter pancakes and yak and chicken cheese waffles. What the fuck? Just the most insane white people should have ever seen. I don't want to trash on my own people, but get it together guys. What are we doing? These things used to hunt caribou in packs and now they're going to brunch. Although the name of the restaurant is called Chateau Le Wouf, which I, I, that is cute. Number two, we have all day dog spas. Not dog groomers, spas. It's a spa for a dog. A full retreat for your dog. I wasn't aware that playing fetch and barking at nothing all day was so fucking stressful. But seeing as we have bred some of these things into anxious balls of existential dread, I can understand why they might need a day off. The dog experience comes with a spa where they get massaged, AKA pet by a stranger for money. You can just ask anyone to do that. Everyone loves petting dogs. Why are you spending money on that? A pool for lounging around, a luxurious exercise walk on insanely fancy grounds, a shampoo bubble bath. Dogs don't like baths. That's not relaxing for a dog. What are we, why are we, why be lying to ourselves. And then they finish the day with some tea and biscuits, some organic dog biscuits, and some stuff called Earl Greyhound tea. Which once again, that's cute as shit, but I, it's still ridiculous. There's also dog amusement parks. Like a dog knows what the fuck is going on. Bring your dog to the park. 
It has no fucking clue that what, how much money you're spending on this and how much more fun it is. Just throw it a stick. That's all it needs. I also found a dog water park called Dog Splash Bark, which once again, adorable. No fucking way that's profitable. How many people are showing up for that? And finally, we have dog chiropractors. Uh, this is not really a location. It's just something I'm really passionate about. Don't bring your fucking dog to a chiropractor. Don't do that. Have you seen these videos where people are bringing their dogs to a douchebag with a fake degree to twist their spine until it snaps? Look how scared this dog is. And it does nothing for the dog. In fact, it can actually really hurt the dog. It can really fuck up the dog if they do it wrong. Stop bringing your dogs to chiropractors. Stop going to chiropractors. I actually have a lot to say about chiropractors and their pseudoscience bullshit. I mean, for one, it's not even... I mean, the guy who invented it thought if you swallowed some fucking magnets, it would cure cancer. He's a fucking lunatic. It's pseudoscience. What was I talking about? Dogs? Right, dogs. The conclusion of this video is you just need to buy a mutt. If you're gonna get a dog, go to a shelter and buy a mutt. They just have so much love to give. They are miles above every other dog in terms of health because they're not fucking inbred to shit. And there's a million of them waiting to be adopted at shelters. I'm gonna put some links down below to help you guys find a shelter. But if you just Google dog shelters near me, you're gonna find them. You don't really need me. And if you're on the fence about shopping and not adopting and you really want a palm ski or whatever the fuck, I just implore you to go and visit the shelter and tell me you don't walk out of there with the most amazing loving creature you've ever seen in your life and not something that is just melting, that is just falling apart because you just wanted to have that perfect look. New videos every Saturday. Sorry about last Saturday. Uh, I was sick and I didn't like the video I was making. And there's a lot of reasons why I didn't post last Saturday, but I am sorry. Oh, and thank you guys for 1.2 million. I just hit that yesterday. Uh, thank you so much. B-T-O-U-T-B-A-B-Y.